let's understand the structural representation of organic compounds from the molecular formula we can come to know the number and the types of various atoms present in the molecule isn't it but when we write the structure then only we can see how these atoms are linked with each other and the structures of organic compounds are represented in several ways and this is one method that is complete and the condensed formula we had learned in chemical bonding that lewis structures are the simplest method of representing any molecule in these structures we need to indicate the atoms along with their electron pairs suppose if i write an electron pair in between the atom a and b it means that this electron pair is shared by both these atoms a and b and these structures are simplified again by representing each pair of electrons making this covalent bond by a dash means simply one dash indicates a single covalent bond representing a sigma bond formation between atom a and atom b similarly two dashes indicates the formation of double bond and three dashes indicates the formation of the triple bond and it's not necessary here for the case of organic compounds to represent the lone pair so it's optional if you want we can represent the lone pair of electrons otherwise not this entire structure is called as the complete structural formula see the example this is ethane in which carbon forms separate single bonds with three hydrogens and this carbon also forms separate single bonds with three hydrogens and there is a carbon carbon single bond and here in the case of ethene you can see the carbon carbon double bond and in the case of ethane you can see the carbon carbon triple bond so this is how we represent the complete structural formula in terms of dash and each and every dash indicates one bond so one dash indicates single bond two dash indicates double bond and three dash indicates triple bond and this structural formula can be simplified further by omitting some or all the dashes representing the covalent bonds and by indicating the number of identical groups attached to an atom by a subscript and this representation is called as the condensed structural formula so let's see the same three examples and let us write the condensed structural formula for these three now for ethane we can completely add all the carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms and write it as c2h6 or we can write that one carbon attached to three hydrogens so it is ch3 and another carbon again attached to three hydrogens it is ch3 and no need to write a dash between this carbon and this carbon that can be omitted so all these individual hydrogens we can make it as a group here ch3 and another ch3 so similarly how can you write for the case of ethene by simply adding all these we get c2h4 or separately writing this one as one group that is ch2 and representing the double bond is always compulsory ch2 so ch2 double bond ch2 then for this one it is c2h2 or representing the triple bond and each carbon is linked with one hydrogen so ch triple bond ch so this method is the complete structural formula and this is the condensed structural formula this is the second method that is a bond line structural formula and it is the simplest and short and convenient method of representing organic molecules in this method the carbon carbon bonds are shown by lines drawn in zigzag manner in this way and in this format each vertex means this point indicates a ch2 group and each terminal line is ch3 means this indicates ch3 this also indicates ch3 and all other these vertex indicates ch2 it is like this and in this case no need to write the atoms of carbon and hydrogen here we need to write only the atoms other than carbon and hydrogen see this example so what's this i simply say that this is pentane and how this is pentane when i extend and write it becomes like this ch3 this is ch2 another ch2 then ch3 the two ends of the line indicate two carbon atoms and the terminal carbon atom is definitely linked to three hydrogen atoms if it is not forming bond with any other atoms and these carbon at the vertex they form bonds with two hydrogens provided they are not forming any other bonds so we need to write ch2 see another example this one we can write like this this is carbon another carbon carbon 
n carbon and there is one more line here which indicates one more carbon and this is the carbon skeleton for this particular molecule and all remaining valences are satisfied by hydrogen means CH3 and again here it is CH3 as this carbon is already forming three single bonds there will be one hydrogen that is CH and this is CH2 and this is CH3 and this compound is nothing but isobutane so at this moment I am not emphasizing on writing the names of these compounds forget about the name why it is isobutane just simply see how this structure can be written in this particular format so we are eliminating all the carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms simply we are writing in terms of lines drawn in zigzag manner see this example so how to write for this compound again same way this is the carbon skeleton and one chlorine is attached to this carbon and all the other valences are satisfied by hydrogen this is CH2 this is CH2 and this is CH3 of course the name of this compound is 3 chlorohexane see this one this one we write like this so this particular structure is written in this particular way in the bond line structural formulae method let me give you some more examples where other than carbon and hydrogen atoms are involved if I write ethyl alcohol this is the formula of ethyl alcohol CH3 CH2 OH so there are two carbon atoms so in this bond line method we need to make a line like this and this is one carbon and this is the other carbon and this carbon is attached to one OH group so we write OH here as this carbon is forming only one bond it can form three more bonds with hydrogen so this is CH3 and this is CH2 is it not satisfying this formula yes so simply we can write like this OH this is how we represent ethyl alcohol in this bond line method let me take another example acetic acid what is the formula of acetic acid as it is CH3 COH now how to write in this format so there are two carbons so when we draw a line definitely at both the ends we have one carbon each these are the two carbons now let us take this carbon is this one so this is CH3 we need to know one more thing that that COH group we write it exactly like this this is C double bond O and OH group and this is attached to the carbon of the CH3 so that is the reason why this one here I write a double bond here I write a single bond so I need to attach oxygen here and OH group here it is simply like this this is the one isn't it so now tell me what does this compound represent yes it means that here there is one carbon here another carbon and here the third carbon and all the other valences are satisfied by hydrogen so the first one is CH3 the second one is C double bond O the third one is CH3 means the three carbon atoms are like this this carbon is attached to three hydrogens again three hydrogens and this is the case where carbon is attached to oxygen and this is nothing but acetone this is how we represent the structures of organic compounds in terms of bond line method let's see the other method the three dimensional representation of organic molecules in this the 3d structure of organic molecules can be represented on paper by using certain conventions and the simplest convention is the solid and the dashed wedge formula in this one the 3d image of a molecule can be perceived from 2d picture so in this method a solid wedge which is represented like this is used to indicate a bond projecting above the plane of paper and projecting towards the observer while a dashed wedge which is represented like this is used to indicate the bond lying below the plane of paper and projecting away from the observer and the bonds lying in the plane of paper are shown by normal lines so this normal line indicates the bonds lying in the plane let us take an example to understand this let us take a tetrahedral molecule with four atoms or groups that is a b c and d bonded to a central carbon so these two bonds represented by normal line they are in the plane of paper and the group c which is represented by a solid wedge is projecting above the plane of paper means towards the observer that is towards you and this group d which is represented by solid wedge is a bond away from the observer means this indicates a bond lying below the plane of paper 
So these are the four groups. These two groups are represented by the normal lines indicating that they are in the plane of paper. The one, the third group indicated by a solid wedge indicates that it is towards you. The fourth group which is represented by a dashed wedge is away from you.